Do you have a black belt? Do you run a school? Have you fought in a cage match? Do you train 17 days a week? If so, that shows some really good dedication, but how do we really find out if you're a true martial artist? Well, we're gonna go over a list of 15 things to find out. Okay, so maybe you can fight, throw chi, or fire off a Hadouken, but let's see if you can identify with most of these signs of a true martial artist. You open doors like this. Nothing in the house is safe, and I mean nothing. Everything is a tool for target practice. Everything is also a weapon, and you wield it with confidence and ferocity. It's also a well-known fact that towels and laundry are acceptable nunchuck substitutes. You take advantage of any natural breaks in your day to quickly walk through or practice a move. Could be kata, could be self-defense technique. Any alone time is your practice time. Especially bathroom breaks. The Boulder Martial Artist will do a full-blown kata in a public bathroom. Don't lie, we all do it. Sorry, not sorry. When visiting someone at their home, your brain immediately scans the layout and analyzes which room would be the best room for a home dojo and how you would set it up if you live there. Now, married people often have two versions of this thought. The first one might be what space that the spouse would be more agreeable to using, and the other is ideally what space would I choose if I had the whole house as an option. <clears throat> Ground floor. You look at random objects and you often wonder, can I karate chop that? If the answer is yes, then you see yourself slicing through it and then you're starting to wonder, how many could you break? Could you stack them? Could you do it backwards? What kind of techniques could you use? If your answer is no, then you start to ask yourself, well, what would I have to do to break it? And remodeling projects are often the playground for this kind of thought process, often to the ire of a significant other. And I might have once accidentally discovered that an axe kick could split a press board countertop, maybe. Everyone's going to attack you. And I mean everybody. You're walking on the street, going to work, that guy grabbing the coffee, he's obviously a bad guy, he's gonna attack you. The woman stepping off the bus, that shifty grandma gliding towards you with her walker, they're all ready to jump you, and you imagine how you would take them all out, easily. And on that same note, within every single shadow, around every single alleyway corner, and behind every closed door, lies an assailant waiting to jump out at you. But it's okay, you're ready. Game on. We've mentioned this before, but the very first thing you do is when you're trying on new pants in the dressing room, is to test how well you can kick in them. Then after that, the next step is to try a multitude of stances. You actually base your purchase on the stress test. But if they're a nice pair of pants and you have to get them and you can't kick in them, well, you get them begrudgingly, but we're always fully prepared to sacrifice them when fighting no shadow assailants. You move through the house practicing your stealth skills. And first, we start off by just walking around in our socks, trekking around quietly. Then we upgrade to navigating the stairs. But if you hear a creak, you fail. So you start opening doors, and all, next thing you know, all everyday tasks are a test of silence. Sneaking up on significant others becomes a mission. Have your apologies ready and your blanket and pillow because you're probably sleeping on the couch. You instinctively bow when entering or exiting the room. People hate watching action movies with you because every time there's a fight scene on, you scream and moan about how they're doing it wrong and how unrealistic it is and how you do it better. For those of you significant others out there that find this really annoying, we can't control it. It's in our nature. But with some understanding, patience, and training, we may be able to sometimes limit this to just an eye roll and a heavy sigh. The struggle is real. When you're going to sleep at night, you relax your mind by either A, thinking of new training scenarios and all the new badass moves you're gonna try tomorrow, 
or B, you're going back to that movie you watched earlier tonight and you're imagining in your head all those fight scenes that you would have done better. You have taken any of those online quizzes that test you on how many five-year-olds you can beat. And you know your test answer. And for those of you who run your own school and teach children's classes, most of you will know the real life number too, from experience, maybe. My online test number was 32. My real life number, I stopped counting. Our classes were never big enough. The greatest variable of this test is the question that asks you whether or not you're willing to pick one of them up and use them as a weapon against the others. Of course. It's a well-known fact that children are an acceptable substitute for nunchucks. And if you want an extra quiz and you want to know what the best martial art is to fighting zombies, go check out one of our other videos. Bruises are trophies. And any workout that does not leave you drenched in sweat, maybe a little bit bloody, and unable to move the next day, just wasn't good enough. Oh, and you use the term sweat equity. You close doors like this. And the number one biggest sign that you are a true martial artist is that you've watched up to this point and you are now currently frantically typing up a list of another 15 items that I missed in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear from you about what some of your daily habits might be when you're not in the dojo. Please leave a comment below, subscribe, join us on Patreon, and we'll see you next time.